Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. It's my, uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, to the committee uh, Judge Dana Douglas, uh, who has uh, been nominated by the President to serve on the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. Uh, Judge Douglas is a, uh, she is a native New Orleanian. She is, uh, New Orleans is our largest city in Louisiana, and we're very proud of it. Uh, her roots run deep. Uh, I note that uh, one of her uncles uh, served as police chief in New Orleans, who I believe was our first uh, African-American police chief in New Orleans. Her mom, mom's here, right? Her mom uh, worked for our police department throughout her career in New Orleans, and uh, she, Judge Douglas has an uncle uh, who was a, a, a served as a federal agent at our Drug Enforcement Administration. Uh, Judge Douglas went to Miami University, undergraduate, went to Loyola Law School, uh, uh, clerked for Judge LaMille, um, and then she started practicing law with Lisco and Lewis. Um, Lisco and Lewis is one of the premier law firms in Louisiana. It's an old law firm. And by our standards, it's very large. For many years, it was considered to be one of the premier oil and gas law firms in Louisiana, but those days are long gone. It's now considered to be one of the premier law firms in everything in Louisiana. Um, I've never worked with Judge Douglas, but uh, uh, in, a, in an earlier life, I was Louisiana's tax collector, and I used to work with several attorneys at Lisco and Lewis whose specialty was state and local taxation. So it's a great law firm. Uh, Judge Douglas worked there, I think, 13 years. Um, she was a partner. Um, she gave up all that big money to, uh, to become a, a United States magistrate judge. I'm proud to introduce her to committee. Uh, this is not a, an especially unusual circumstance because except for doing a little teaching, I haven't practiced law since 1995, at least not actively. But, but uh, Judge D Douglas and I don't know each other well. I haven't had the pleasure. We had a good visit in my office, and I am uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to her testimony today. So thank, thanks to you and to all your family for being here. Um, Mr. Garcia, uh, how old are you? Senator, I'm 36. Okay. And um, <clears throat> you're now at the Department of Justice. You were at O'Melveny and Myers. That's correct. You were a partner there? Yes, sir. How many partners um, are there at O'Melveny? Now, it's a great law firm. Um, my guess would be between uh, 100, around 150. Yeah. Okay. Um, Given, given your age and, and your experience, um, are there any partners at O'Melveny and Myers that have more experience that you think would, would make a better addition to our courts of appeal? Are you the very best that O'Melveny has to offer? Senator, O'Melveny and Myers has many incredible, incredible attorneys. Agreed. Uh, and I, I would uh, certainly hope to just be judged on my own record. I am. I, I'm just comparing. Well, let's let's move on. I want to understand. Uh, I want to understand your record. You've done a lot of pro bono case cases. The June Medical Services case was that a pro bono case? Uh, yes, Senator. I believe so. Okay. So so that means you weren't paid. The firm wasn't paid. That's correct. You just chose to do it. The the firm was not paid. As an attorney, I, I would have been compensated uh, for my time. Yeah, but the yes. firm wasn't paid. That's correct. Senator. So you didn't have to do it to eat? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> and in June Medical Services, that was a Louisiana case, you argued that a doctor should not have to have admitting privileges at a, at a hospital in order to uh, perform an abortion. You said that was unconstitutional. Is that under my understanding uh, correct? Senator, that case was unique because just four years earlier, the Supreme Court yeah, had held a very Yeah, but it's my understanding of that case, right, Counselor? Uh, yes, that's correct. Our clients okay. argued that that uh, right, law was unconstitutional. Let me ask you this. 
the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus City of New York. You represented the City of New York. Was that a pro bono case? Uh, yes, Senator, it was. Okay, so you didn't have to do it to eat. You chose to do it. At a large law firm, Senator, if you're asked to work on a case, um, in my experience, unless I was too busy, I, I believe I always said yes. Yeah, but you were a star at Mel Melvity. I mean, you were a Supreme Court clerk. You can pick and choose your cases. Um, all right, and in that case, you argued that um, a gun owner in New York City could own a gun in his home, but he couldn't take it, or she couldn't take it outside their home, including to a shooting range. Is that right? Senator, it's actually a little bit different. Uh, uh, individuals could take their firearms to uh, training ranges in the city, uh, but that case actually focused on a doctrine of mootness. Yeah, but you, you supported the New York's position to restrict the ownership of guns. Is that correct? Uh, Senator, that case, uh, certainly New York City was our client. Okay. There was a regulation on premises licenses and where right. folks could train with them. Right. I think most people know what the case is, Counselor. Uh, now, you, the Our Lady of Guadalupe School v. Morrissey was another case you handled against Catholic elementary schools. Was that a pro bono case? Uh, yes, Senator, I believe so. So you didn't have to, that you weren't paid. You didn't have to do it to eat. You chose to do it. Similar to before, uh, I enjoyed litigating complex cases, especially in the Supreme Court, so I would have agreed right. uh, when I was asked. And so you were arguing against um, the, the uh, strike that. You, you were arguing against the Catholic elementary schools and against at least from their point of view, their religious freedom. Is that correct? Uh, I think that's fair, Senator. We, our firm represented the plaintiffs okay. in those cases. All right. I got 45 seconds left, Counselor, and I wanted to ask Judge Douglas a question, but I don't know if I'm going to have time. Uh, she says it's okay. <laughs> um, we, we, we've had a, a circumstance in America where we have uh, prosecutors who have chosen not to prosecute an entire line of cases, not to exercise prosecutorial discretion, but just to say, even though the legislature passed a statute saying, let's say, shoplifting uh, of any amount but under $950 is a crime. The, uh, certain prosecutors have said, I, I just don't believe that's right. I'm not going to prosecute uh, those cases. And they have taken it on themselves. What, do you, what is your opinion of that? Thank you, Senator. I think those types, types of decisions are, are very important for prosecutors to make carefully. And as you suggested... What's your opinion? Are they right or wrong? Well, Senator, as a judicial nominee, um, what I could commit is that if a case involving uh, questions yeah, like that... What's your opinion? Are they right or wrong? Well, Senator, in the abstract, I think every executive branch, the president, has a constitutional duty to Do take care of the... Do you have an opinion, Counselor? As a uh, Senator, as have a judicial you nominee... About it? It is absolutely an important issue. In fact, the Supreme Court... Have you Court, thought about it? The Supreme Court I'm just... I'm running out of time. Have you thought about it? Uh, I have actually not worked on a case relating to that. So you have no opinion about what's going on all across America in terms of prosecutors not prosecuting criminals. You're well, telling me that. A Sen Supreme Court clerk for Justice Kagan. Senator, Barbara I... Barbara Melvin and Myers. You're telling me you haven't thought about that? Oh, that's not what I'm saying at all, Senator. Okay. I, what I'm saying Tell is... Tell me your opinion. Uh, I, I hope you'll appreciate that the code of judicial You're not going conduct. To give me your opinion, are you, uh, Senator? My my opinion is that I'm those done. are important Thank questions. You, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so, 